Hey, how's it going? Yeah, great. Woo! Okay. So uh, I'm Aaron Murray. I co-founded a company called Fractal with Contra. We do open source stuff. I've uh, been in Node for a long time. This is my info, aka Funky Tech on Twitter and GitHub and stuff like that. Um, so this is not a talk about React. And uh, what I mean by that is, I mean, it is obviously a talk about React. This is not going to be low level 101 or, deep, or low level deep dive into the internals of React. I think people who are interested in React, we've seen a lot of articles come out that are like about the diffing algorithm or about you know, particular internals of React. And what I'm trying to talk about today is, OK, I'm a developer. I'm working at the application level frequently. How do I actually use it and get it integrated into a working stack? Um, so what is React? Uh, there's a lot of confusion around it. Most of the time, I talk to people. They're like, OK, it's like an alternative to AngularJS or Backbone or whatever. And in a way, it is. But really, uh, it's not an MVC. So it is a front-end JavaScript library for building UI. Uh, they call it the V, or just the view layer in MVC. And it has a really great component system. So React isn't an MVC framework. It does not have really the M or the C. So let me just do a quick survey. Who here has heard of React, or like heard like what it is? Who's played around with it? Who's using it in production? OK, OK, yeah. So. If you have really hard questions, talk to me after. I'm not a React expert, so I'm just someone who's trying to use it, and that's kind of the approach I'm taking here. So really, I think the key, com the key things about it are a really strong component system. As far as I'm concerned, they beat web components or Polymer to the punch, right? Because they're still trying to iron out that API. Like, you know, people are playing around with Polymer and kind of like in-browser components, but React's component system is fantastic. It works really well. I think it has a really good um, bounded context that it defines and lets you pass in and out and components on other components and stuff like that. And for me, a lot of, who here works with Backbone? Angular guys? OK, so Angular obviously has a lot of, puts opinions in place to solve a lot of problems. Backbone is very unopinionated, so you've got to roll a lot of your own stuff and you end up using Marionette or whatever. And as far as I found when I started using the component system in React, I felt like it solved a lot of problems that I had in Backbone. So that, maybe that's just me, but as far as you know, componentizing. Uh, obviously, it has a virtual DOM diff. This is the, much, the most touted feature of it, I would say. And uh, we'll get more to that. But basically, what that means is it doesn't, it, it doesn't implement two-way binding or a digest loop like AngularJS does. It has a virtual DOM. It does a performant diff when you change state of your view. Uh, and figures out, you know, down the tree, what ch just what changes. It doesn't do traditional dirty checking and or like a uh, in the digest loop, and it just figures that out for you uh, in in this vir virtual space where it doesn't have the expense of CSS and you know relay out and stuff like that that happens as soon as you touch the DOM. So they get this perform oddly performant thing, even though they're doing something kind of crazy. Um, and then the idea of one-way data flow. Uh, so I'll come back to that. Uh, components. So here's one example. Um, and this is just a gist. It's actually a modification off their, just to dive in code really quickly. I know it's not highlighted, so I'm sorry about that. But to dive in really quickly, this is the, the timer example off the React, the React homepage. The difference here is we've just threw a couple practical things in here. Because uh, one thing that's really cool that they have is this prop types, um, which actually gets as a functional nerd, I, I feel like they actually get pretty close to like contracts, which if anyone's familiar with contracts, it's like kind of uh, where you can do almost typing in a dynamic language, but it's not a type system. So if there's any Haskell guys here right now, they're like, fuck you guys. It's not a real type system. JavaScript sucks. But um, for the rest of us, what's that? That's but they're not here. OK, great. <laughs> they're always lurking in a JavaScript meetup just to tell us how terrible <laughs> JavaScript is. Um, <laughs> need a real type system. So no, I'm very interested in this idea of contracts uh, in and out of this context, which is to say, it, it seems really minimal, but just the fact that you, it's going to throw an error if you don't pass the right type into it in your console is actually extremely helpful when you're debugging this kind of, this kind of view layer stuff, I think. So you've almost got this little contract thing where it's going to check the types of properties you have. And then just to walk through, and I'll give like a simple example. Basically, the way you set up a React view is you create the class. 
Okay, so we've got some prop types that are getting passed into the component. And that's what I was talking about, the bounded context of the components. If the apparent component or whatever you're instantiating this thing and passing down to it from is going to pass in properties. So that's, how they, that's, that's your contract to communicate uh, to other components in your system. So prop type is going to take care of making sure you've got some valid things passed in. Default props is, okay, if it wasn't defined, what's my default, right? Very simple. Get initial state, say, uh, like, what do you, you know, if you're actually setting the state of something relevant to that view every time you want to instantiate that. Uh, and then this tick, this is specific to this example. Um, component did mount, this is one of the life cycle things. And like I said, I'm really not going over the component life cycle and very specifics of React. You know, some of you guys have played around with it and check it out. But basically, when the component mounted, they're gonna, we're going to set this up. We're going to set an interval, and we're going to start calling this dot tick, which is our function right here. And we're going to render that out. So really, what the uh, what that end up, ends up looking like is this example right here. So it's really the same exact example with a couple of augmentations, just primarily the prop type things, because I wanted to show that example. But you can see it's counting it down. And uh, this is really interesting to me, because I think this is a really, really clean expression of component. There's not a, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Basically, at the end of it here, you just call, oh, uh, and I'm sorry, this is JSX. I don't mess with JSX. I don't know who's a J JSX is an XML dialogue, dialect meant to look like HTML that they use in React. The Facebook guys really like it. I really don't like it at all. We just use code. Yeah, we'll get bumped down with you. Man. So it's like, so here's the actual code, right? And so this is really all you have to do is react.render component and throw it in the DOM somewhere. And you've now mounted this component in, which can have child components and everything else. So uh, really straightforward, really clean. I don't think you need to learn a lot to get this thing, to get this component kicked off in the browser. So that's a big, that's a big plus to me. Um, so components, yeah, that was the React example. I just went to it oh, also. Um, Reusable components, prop validation. So you can see they have all these built-in types. You can also do custom props, right? So you can do you can just write a function that's a custom validator against this. So I, I think this is particularly uh, useful. So functional Kool-Aid. I'm drinking it. Who 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 self-identifies as a functional leaning JavaScript programmer? All right, nice, LA. Um, so, I mean, what are we talking about, the functional stuff in here? So DOM, what is this? So why is it performant, the diff? They batch DOM read and write operations. Um, efficient update only of the subtree of the thing that actually got checked. So unlike dirty checking, uh, it's explicitly set it's dirty. And I apologize to anyone who doesn't have the, the basis in React again. So just to explain sets, you explicitly call set state to set the state of your view. So I set React is not a model view controller. But views do hold state, and they represent that state. So you explicitly call set state, which re-renders your view. Or rather, I, I think the ultimate value for the application dev here is that when you call set state, it appears to you that render gets called. You don't care the crazy DOM diffing and whatever stuff they're doing behind the scenes. But every time, instead of like two-way binding where you have to worry about, I change this, and these two things are going to update and keep it in sync, and you're mutating state within your view. You call set state, as far as you're concerned, rent your render method on your view just got called again. It's just everything that you put in there in your template just got re-rendered. And I think that that's what they call one-way data flow, where it's the data flows one way down. There's no two-way. There's no reaching into the DOM and manipulating. There's no uh, real mutation happening. It's you, you change some state, and you get a fret, and you get a reload. So it's actually really easy to reason about and really easy to build, because you represent the state in such a way in your template, in your view, that every, when you call set state, it just gets re-triggered again. So if you push, if you add something to an, to an array, to a collection, it's just going to get triggered. Your render is going to get triggered again. And now that new thing is going to be there in your view, right? And you didn't, you didn't do anything to that. You didn't have to worry about uh, any kind of back and forth. It just happened. So I think, so it's like, cool. This all sounds really great. Um, let's build an app. So the question, now the question is, well, OK, what do you do? If we've got the V, what's the, what's the next step, right? So enter Flux. Flux is not a framework. Uh, it's an application architecture uh, that Facebook touts. 
So I just want to touch on this really quick. Um, here, here's how this works. So they really, really want to play up this one-way immutable functional data flow, which I'm a huge fan of. So at first I was like, I'm sold. Flux architecture, this sounds awesome. Let's do it. So here it is. And they're like, oh, we eschew, you know, heavy MVC hierarchical for this thing. And then I started looking at it and I'm just like, okay, so we don't have a controller, but we have a dispatcher. And we don't have models, but we have a store. Like, it's kind of like Chris. <laughs> I'm of the opinion you cannot get away from MVC no matter what you you can call it anything you want, but it's still MVC, right? So, um, and they've also brought this idea of action. So, in any in any event, I, I went on this path a bit, and the idea is the view uh, talks to an action, which dispatches something for the system to do, which then you know does that, then creates a callback that talks to the data store, which is like your model or collection. And there's change events, and then that refreshes your view, and then that whole process kind of life cycle starts over again, right? Um, I, I just, I couldn't get sold on it. I felt like, I, I was like, I, I feel like they're, it's confusing, and no offense to the Angular people, it's just like when I'm like, you know, uh, what the fuck is a directive? Um, <laughs> I don't want to learn what a directive is before I can do something. I felt the same way about this kind of, where I was like, I don't want to learn, and, not only that, when it came, there was no implementations. They were just like, this is our architecture, and we're not coming out with the framework. So it was like, so I have to implement my, I have to first learn what a dispatcher is, and then implement it. And I mean, it's just basically an event bus, but still, right? It's, I, it turned me off a little bit. So, um, but I wanted to mention it, because that's, there was a video there with this link, and I'll have these slides up later. There is a framework now called Fluxor, and you can see it's like they do, they create a store, which basically kind of looks like a collection, right? If you were doing like a backbone to do MVC and stuff like that. So uh, definitely check it out. People seem to like Flux a lot, but we went in a different direction. Uh, we created something called Fission, and this is really not like 100% best practices. We're ready to release this and tell everyone to use it. There's really a lot of explorations around ideas uh, using React. So basically what Fission is, it's up with this URL, I'm gonna hit it in a minute, is React for view rendering plus backbone models and collections, uh, plus page.js for routing. So um, I hate to be a purveyor of yet another framework, um, you know, but uh, I, it's like, what, you know, what, do you, what are you gonna build? What are you gonna build with? You need some, you need some kind of structure. You either build it yourself. Um, so basically, we came in. Uh, the reason I chose backbone, just to walk through a couple of ideas, is I like backbone models and collections pretty well. I mean, they already solved a lot of hard problems. More importantly, there's a vibrant plugin ecosystem. So I'll show an example in a minute where it's like I could just swap out Firebase for my REST backend, right? And like, it's supported. I don't have to go and build that myself. Um, they solved caching. And the way that uh, backbone models interact is there's actually a global cache. And also when models are modified, they notify their collections which is basically a poor man's dispatcher, right? So kind of get the dispatch for free that Flux provides, I feel like, because you're already notifying the parent collection or what Flux architecture would call a store when you modify a model down this level. So here's a model, uh, looks exactly like a backbone model. Uh, I got ID attribute for Mongo, if you recognize that, if you, you guys use Mongo at all, um, and a URL that it can hit for rep endpoint. Routing, so this is really a wrapper around page.js routing that just provides um, the ability to use, A, use middleware. So like this is the simplest one where it would just log out your routes, but obviously we have authentication middleware. Um, you know, things like, even silly things like clearing, like when you log, do a login with Facebook, have you ever noticed, and it comes back, it's like slash equals underscore underscore equal, you get like weird, dirty URLs coming back from like uh, OAuth logins. So like middleware that strip that out and you know everything from that to obviously authentication on routes and whatnot. So just specifying a route, specifying a uh, a view here, which is a uh, a React view or really a Fission view, whatever. But just, and uh, what element of your page you want it to be rendered into. And so behind the scenes, when you hit this routes, it's going to mount and unmount your components for you. So it just simplifies that. Routes it. Uh, Implemented a collection view and item view, which I think are the only useful things I like out of Marionette's insanely large uh, API surface. No offense to any Marionette core developers who might be here tonight. Um, 
But like that was my experience. Uh, again, keeping the API surface really small. I mean, if you're doing business applications, this is like 80. This gets you like 70% of the way. If you just have collection view and item view, if you're doing HUD and uh, you're hitting either you know a REST API or a Firebase or something like that. So, just to go through this real quick, I'm just requiring it, and uh, we're actually going more, leaning more towards Browserify these days. And there's this swell where I think Webpack is about to explode. Everybody's getting into Webpack. I see. It seems like um, this is using require. It's arbitrary, uh, but I'm including my match model, which I just defined. I'm declaring an item view here, which I'm going to show in a moment. And my render is just, if there's no uh, items, say there's no items, otherwise just lift them all out. And what, what happens here in the collection view is it takes your, what you, exactly what you'd expect. It takes your model, uh, it takes your collection, and it renders each of the models in the collection into your match view and gives them back in the context of your render function in an array called this.items, which just, so you can just dump them right out because you've probably got, or lay them out however you need, right? So really simple idea, same with model view. You're just gonna give it a model and it's gonna give you predictably this.model. So within the bounded context of your model view here, within one of those that's being rendered at likely as one of those item views, you can do whatever you can do with the backbone model, which is, you know, save, um, or whatever you need to do, right? And so the render function, again, is just as simple as grabbing this and just returning a span. Because again, React, if you're not using JSX, you're just using pure code to express the DOM elements that you want to output. And you just return it at the end of the, at the, end of the render function. So any questions, by the way, right? No, like, why are you doing this? This is so terrible. Flux. Okay, cool. Uh, testing. So I think like a really interesting uh, thing they've got going here, uh, the text utilities. They have a good set of text utilities uh, render into document. For example, you can render, you can just mount your node in your testing environment and do that. Um, I'm actually experimenting with, and I think I put a link to it. Uh, using Domino, which is like JS DOM, but it's supposed to be more performant so that you don't need to use Phantom JS or run in a browser environment to be able to test stuff on the command line. Uh, I'm pretty close to having that working, so that's cool. I just think it'll be really lightweight. But what's really great is it's got to simulate events. So basically, once you get this thing mounted, you can they've got a whole testing utility suite to simulate clicks or whatever other events you want to mess with, mock out components. And I think they put actually a good amount of thought into this, uh, into the testing utilities, which is always really nice to have from the library when they're trying to help you test because you're usually fighting against uh, front end libraries, I find, trying to test. Except for, yeah, Angular also a good job. I think part of the reason Angular has gotten so popular is serious people said, wow, they really took considered testing as a first class citizen and dependency injection so that we can you know, do this without you know, it being a complete and total nightmare and spinning up headless browsers and stuff like all the time and stuff like that. So um, yeah, here's my example. It's totally not working totally. because There's like some tweaks and hacks you have to do. But uh, getting close to using Domino to within a uh, Mocha test here, and I apologize for the coffee script. I know some people's eyes are probably burning. Um, no, Co coffee script fans here tonight? What? I love you, LA. This is awesome. Man. I was so afraid. Like I had some bunch of examples in coffee script, and I was like, I gotta rewrite all these in JavaScript for my talk, so people don't just lose completely lose their shit and like not pay attention to anything I'm saying because they're just like, this guy put coffee script on my screen. Like, I can't even handle this. So. Dude, amazing. So I was like, I was totally ready to be, like totally apologist or former coffee script. But um, so basically, yeah, this idea that, you know, you can create Domino, I think this is interesting to me. I'm kind of like mocking out then with Domino the, uh, the window, the, the global document and window objects, and then being able to use the test utils dot render into document my my uh, my React view here, my for Fission view, and be able to trigger uh, mock other components, trigger events and things like that, and check that all on the CLI. That's really attractive to me to keep my unit test suite like humming really lightweight. Um, so that's pretty cool, and then. Um, Here's actually an example of a test. This is like secret production code, but I'm going to show you guys, because just, just you guys. 
because you, you, you guys you guys are cool so it's like it's all in the video whatever the internet. <laughs> Just the internet. it's not very revealing so um, but you can see here can everybody see this code I, I mean I, I know it's not that big but hopefully we can on the video or whatever but you can see here we're just creating an instance of the component, rendering it into the, to the document. It's really just that easy, and then calling calling these events that should you know these functions that the component has on it from the instance, and basically just checking that you know what, that, that that it got toggled. I mean, this is a really really simple example, but you can kind of see how it's really easy to test this stuff because you just got an easy way to mount it, and then you can unmount it. Um, and yeah, this is a really, really simple example, but you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of it. So, with that said, I'm just going to show a couple. I know I'm probably running low on time here. Okay. Um, so this is it right here, Fission, and uh, we just rewrote. I had all the docs in CoffeeScript, and I just rewrote them in JavaScript because I was like, no one's going to pay attention if it's in CoffeeScript. I'm glad that there's not like the coffee hate culture out here that there is a lot of other places. It's really bad in San Francisco. <laughs> it's worse in Oakland. <laughs> um, Oakland is the JavaScript capital of the world, and they don't have any room for coffee script out there. So, oh no, it's really bad. It's really bad some places. Like people zone out the second you start doing it. So, anyways, all the examples that I showed in my slides are on here, uh, but the code base itself is all in CoffeeScript. So um, just to show you a really quick example, uh, mix-ins are a really cool feature of, to be able to dry things out. Um, not going to go in depth on that, but for example, uh, what happens when we mount the component, uh, if it's a collection view, is we actually construct that collection with uh, your config that you passed into it, call a fetch, and uh, set up a listener to basically listen to add change, remove events on that collection, and re-render items. And then if you look at render items, it's really just mapping over that collection and rendering each component out uh, of, its item, of its item view and calling force update. So, so basically, just to explain real quickly, I mentioned set state. Set state is kind of like a straightforward way, if you're in a view, that you would set the state of that, of that view and let it and re-trigger or re-render. Force update, when you're working behind the scenes, uh, you can basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. You, don't, it's, it's, you can set something and then without using set state, force a, force a re-render of the screen. So it's just a shortcut to, to flush it, just call, make a re-render. Um, and if there's someone here who knows more than me and you look at this code and you're like, this is not performant for some reason, please let me know. Uh, so this is really in the nascent stages. We're just trying to get the, the API locked down, but we're using it in some apps right now. It seems to be working really well. Um, and I give that credit to React because of its component system. I, I think that the way the components work is, is really good. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. I mean, all these, you know, all these views in here. So really we're at the, this is not a, uh, hey, come use this phase. It's a request for comments phase. So I would love anybody who's interested or works with, with React already or has like some stack they put together, take a look at this and just give us comments and say wha what you guys think and uh, we'll go from there. Cool. Is there a server side component to this, or is it all, all client side right now? This this framework, it, it's completely client side. Are you thinking about server side rendering with React also, or not? I'd say it's out of scope for this. Okay. I, I mean, maybe it's not. Like, I just haven't really thought about it. So, like, if you have a use case where it might be helpful to do that, and you think, I would I would love to support that if it fits. React is nice because you can run it on the server side, and like, it's because uh, I. Like I'm using React on some site too, but that's spit out. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, just curious. It's well, I I would love any comments, uh, any thoughts you have on how we could make this, you know, if this would be useful on the server side. Just because that's not my use case, I really haven't given any thought to it. But so I can't I can't really say if I think it's a good or a bad fit. So you I, since you have that use case, I would say take a look at it and tell me if you think it could help, and I'd I'd, I'd be happy to support it if it would be at all helpful to you. So. SEO, you said? 
Yeah, yeah, because like you want like Google to be able to see your content, right? So that's, that's why it's so super valid use case. I for us the kind of stuff we we build a lot of S, super SPA, you know, like like interactive apps that don't have a lot of SEO need. So I haven't really gotten yeah, into it. You can do like a single page application that also has SEO. That's what React. Sure. You mean when the search engine crawls, you just figure that render it on the server side and serve it, serve text. Yeah, you serve it content rich. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I think that's a good use case. I just haven't had that use case recently since we've been doing this stuff. So, yeah. Um, and just with, here's an example too. So this, with a plugin that I'm going to release like as soon as I can push it up, is you could just give this a Firebase URL instead of a uh, a REST URL, and it would just work. So it just uses Backfire, which is Firebase's officially supported backbone plugin. And so, you, so I really like that's that's really like where that decision came from to support backbone is the idea that you could just swap between REST or Firebase or local storage or whatever, and you don't have to write a whole new thing for that. So, any questions? Uh, so you previously you would have used uh, backbone views. Yeah. So when you swap. Back on use for React JS, was that relatively painless? Like, are there any issues between React and backbone models of collection? I would say, yeah, there's not, there's not any issues between uh, using re, uh, backbone collections and models with React. I, I think it works really well. Um, it's like, like, so like you saw that, of course, all it is is the model changes or the collection changes, whatever, you know, the, any of those events fire, and it just forces a re render of. Of React, so it's actually a really nice integration point because you just modify your collection or models as you normally would, and you get the view re-rendered as you would expect in React. Uh, as far, but I would say like it's totally different than Backbone views. Like I mean, it looks fairly similar, but the way you're thinking about it with that one-way data flow versus Backbone, I think the way you would architecture your application is a lot different in a Backbone application versus this. So, but the, but the collections. Like I said, it's almost a poor man's dispatcher because it's just like, hey, this data changed in this model. Notify my parent collection. Notify that view that it's bound to, and refresh it. So it's, it, it fits pretty seamlessly. Yes. Okay. Huh? Give it up.